So, the Orlando Magic have been popping up on people's radar since last year, but now they have fully awakened everyone and they're a team you can't take lightly on any given night or else it's truly over with. The intensity they play with sparks a different feel you usually don't get when watching games around the league. That next man up mentality is fully present with this group of guys and with them all having one common goal in mind of winning it all, the sky is truly the limit for this young vibrant team. Having a solid defensive unit can really boost the team's chances of winning games due to how difficult you can make it for opposing teams to score, and as of now, the Magic are first in forcing opponents to turn over the ball at 17 per game, which in turn results in easier buckets going the other way and less shots at the basket for the opposing team. You'll notice length plays a huge factor into this, as running into traps like this against a 6'10 and 6'7 defender can leave you in a frenzy, and just when you think you can pass this right back out to the wing, not only does Black get a slight tip on the ball, but if we rewind this back a couple seconds, you'll see Paolo Bancaro hustles over from this initial trap all the way across court to take away this pass to Finney Smith. When opposing teams try and penetrate the paint, the Magic are able to sink in quickly to take away those opportunities in close, and by being able to cover a lot of ground, Franz can intercept his pass, turn on his point guard skills, and then set up Anthony Black for the N1 in transition. When you tune into the Magic on any given night, you see the major intensity they provide on the defensive end, and truly, it's all sparked by a player in Jalen Suggs who lays his body on the line every time he's on the floor. Whether it's a mismatch, a guy his size, or if he's scrambling around the court, Suggs plays with so much heart that it rubs off on his teammates and lifts his team up completely. Now, if you want to see a full defensive breakdown over Suggs, let me know in the comments. But just so you all know if you didn't, having the offense to go along with a strong defensive core is a major key. This Magic team is loaded with guys who can contribute on the offensive end, and when you pair that with their more than impressive defense to start the season, this is where their 12-5 record stems from. Currently sitting at number 2 in the Eastern Conference on a 7-game win streak, the Magic are 3rd in defensive rating at 107, and they're also 5th in net rating with a positive 5.3. Now like I said earlier, this team is structured around length with guys such as Anthony Black, Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Jonathan Isaac, and hey, why not throw in Jalen Suggs and Gary Harris as well. Now am I saying they're as lengthy as a team like the Toronto Raptors? Eh, nah, not out of the way. But from the clips earlier, you can easily see how much their length affects opposing teams. Not only have they drafted a ton of versatile perimeter and wing type players, but they have drafted some bona fide stars to build this roster around as well. For casual, they might look at the Magic and say, oh yeah, they have Paolo Bancaro. But for all of us who tune into Orlando, you would really know that it's 1A and 1B with Bancaro and Wagner. To give them both their respective shine, let's start off discussing Paolo Bancaro. After putting up a more than impressive rookie campaign, Paolo took home the NBA Rookie of the Year award, and honestly, there wasn't much media hype around him. Simply because one, he's on the Orlando Magic who barely gets any coverage, and then two, because all eyes were on Victor Wimbanyama and what he would do coming into the league. When kicking off this season, it was looking like Paolo was going to have another adjustment period as he struggled at the start, but as of right now, Bancaro is putting up averages at 19 points, 6 rebounds and 4 assists, all while shooting 48% from the field and 43% from D. Now are these numbers miles better than his last year's stats? Nah, not really. But when you take into account that it's just the beginning of the year and that his 3 point percentage has jumped nearly 14%, it shows you just how much Paolo has improved and that this season could be huge for him. That improved three-point shooting spaces out the floor even more for the Magic, allowing for easier attacks to the basket, or if defenders decide to sag off, then with much confidence, Bancaro can step up to the plate and knock it down. I know a lot of people don't want to give Bancaro his praise yet, but as real Who fans, we must give credit where credit is due and acknowledge the promising play from Bancaro in his first season and his improvement early on this season. I don't care if people want to get mad about it, but I did make a whole entire breakdown over Bancaro and I stated that he reminds me of Ricky LeBron when he first stepped on the scene, and after a strong Ricky season and how he's looking right now, my opinion still hasn't changed. Now am I saying him and LeBron are identical? No, I'm not saying that at all so don't get carried away. The reason I say such thing is because Paolo can affect the game in every way on the court and his presence is heavily felt when he's out there. When you're watching a Magic game, you can sometimes forget he's only in his second year in the NBA simply because how comfortable he looks. Whether it's a bucket from the inside where he's currently connecting on 60% of his shots from less than 8 feet, draining shots from the outside at his improved 43% rate, or if it's him assisting the open man to spread the wealth, Paolo can stitch it all together and then when we switch sides of the ball, you can see signs of Paolo being a solid defender around the rim. Of course, there are still flaws in his game that need to be worked out, such as efficiency in that in-between area, careless turnovers, and all around just polishing aspects of his game. But if we're talking from a holistic standpoint, Bancaro's skill set is not one that comes around often. 
Hopefully we continue to see him make strides as not only a player, but a leader as well, because on a team that's still growing, these are all great signs to see from one of your leaders who is only 21 years young. Now, some of you probably raised your eyebrow when I said one of your leaders, but as I said earlier, it's really interchangeable with who leads this team as the German Franz Wagner is one of the most unique young talented stars in the league. A lot of people sleep on Franz because his game doesn't hold the typical flash, nor does he specialize heavily in one aspect, but when you watch him on a nightly basis, you can see just how much he impacts the game for this Orlando Magic team. Being the second highest scorer on this team, Franz is putting up 19 points a night on 45% from the field and on 5 3 point attempts per game, he's only converting these at a 29% rate. Now usually I would be majorly concerned about such a low shooting percentage from the outside, but when you note that Franz ended the 2022-23 season with a 36% deep ball, it makes me think he's just in a shooting slump to start the year and he'll soon turn it around. By having such a quirky play style, it makes it hard for defenders to predict where Franz is going most of the time, so this opens up many different lanes for him, and off these attack angles, now Wagner can decide if he wants to set up a teammate or coast in for the bucket himself. It's not very often you see a player that is 6'10 and only 22 years old move on the court with such a natural feel that it makes it seem like they've been in the league way longer. This is such a great base to build off for Franz, and so far the Magic have done well putting him in positions to showcase not only his talent when it comes to scoring the ball, but also his leadership skills on the floor as well. When you look at his numbers of dishing out 3 assists per game, it might seem like a low number and really not all that impressive. But when you watch full games and see how Wagner navigates on the court, you can see that he noticed his plays developing way before they even happen. For some time these past years, the Magic have been looking for a true point guard who can lead this unit on the floor. And in my opinion, it seems like they have found a few options, but they really aren't set in stone just yet. So ladies and gentlemen, that's what makes Franz's facilitating such a huge deal. This skill gives the Magic a player who can not only score the ball, but someone who isn't one dimensional so if the rim has a lid on it, he can take that backseat approach and set up the squad for easy buckets. But hey now, let's say the shot is falling and Franz is in his zone. Well this is when we all get to see the true potential of Wagner. Whether it's him scoring inside with some nasty footwork on his route to the basket, or if it's him knocking down shots from the outside granted his percentages improve, Franz is more than capable of being a dangerous inside out scorer for this offense. Pretty much your way to describe him is your all in one package type of player. As long as he works out the shooting slump and continues to be a glue piece for this team, then you could pretty much say the Orlando Magic struck goal with not only him, but Paolo Bencaro as well. Now there's many guys on this team that play a huge role into their success, but what we do over here at Hoop Mastery is we leave some things up to the community to discuss. In the comments below, let's talk about players that need more playing time, who you think will break out, who has already broke out, and what aspects of certain players do you like the most. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like before heading over to watch this Devin Booker analysis. I thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.